Scarborough Board of Education meeting. Um, may I have the attendance, please? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Mrs. Ling? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Mrs. Murray? Ms. Hartle? Can you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this is a workshop meeting, but do we have any adjustments to the agenda? There are no adjustments. Okay, so item 4.1 is a review or revision to the draft of the school board goals. Did everyone have a chance to review those? Looks like what we discussed. I thought it would uh, be uh, just an easy review and workshop form uh, so that this can be on the next um, uh, regular business agenda for the board to adopt the goals. Um, I think I had captured all of the revisions as you had uh, had walked through them, but if not, um, this is the opportunity to um, to make those revisions. Any, anyone see anything that needs to be changed or? I just have a question uh, with regards to negotiations. Uh, what's the bullet on the C? 3 C? C. It says, during negotiations and within four days of each meeting, the school assigned a negotiation team member who produce and internally distribute a summary of the meeting. Uh, we haven't designated to whom that is distributed. And it seems to me that it should be only the negotiations team. I think in our last meeting we added internally. internally. Yeah. Meaning it would just be with the negotiations team. Okay. Yeah. I think that was the one revision to that. The word internally distributed internally. It would be assumed then that it is the <laughs> negotiations <laughs> team. Yep. Very good. And I sent out uh, the dates uh, and I think Kelly distributed them to, uh, thank you. Expiration dates. The expiration dates on the contract. Yes. So uh, that's already been attended to. Okay. Anything else, anyone? Okay. Good. Item 4.2, um, generating school board workshop topics for 2014-15. I think um, <clears throat> we have some we have some fairly standard agenda items in terms of um, certain updates that the board has wanted that have been in some ways institutionalized. Um, there are also some topics, I, I know they've come up um, here and there and other uh, in the board conversation and as well there are some topics that I think are important that we um, think about including in, in workshop discussions. So the list that you have is the uh, long range facility plan. Uh, there's about to be another meeting of, of that group but I think it would be uh, really important for the entire board to get a good sense of what that all looks like and what that system is. Um, it's essentially uh, data that has been collected, it's completed, and it's very possible in a fairly sophisticated way to run certain scenarios um, in terms of facilities. And Jane is the, is the chair for that uh, committee. So I, I think that it would be important for us to sooner rather than later um, update the rest of the board on, um, on what that looks like. It's very, very impressive and it's very robust in terms of what it can do. Mm -hmm. So I think you'd probably like to see that. There was some mention of um, K kids and um, letting them maybe get started but inviting uh, some of the younger kids that are um, involved. Uh, that's a Kiwanis Kids pro uh, program. It's been in the schools for a while. Is that correct, Ms. Perry? Yes. And Mary Griffin uh, is a guidance counselor at Wentworth who has been their advisor for a number of years as well. 
So it would, might be nice to have some of the younger students come and talk about their projects, but we'll give them some time to get, get going on those things. NEASC is the accreditation process for the high school, and that process um, is, is going to be beginning. I had shared a letter that said uh, that we were actually being delayed one year because they had a too large a cohort in the, in the year that we were sort of settling into, and so that is going to be pushed out for a year. But I, I think that there's enough new folks on the board that have not been through the NEASC process um, and, it's, and the process, quite frankly, has changed as well, that it would be good for us to um, have a good sense about what that process entails. Um, it's uh, critically important that the high school be given additional time, that the faculty of the high school be given additional time, not this year, but in the next school year. Um, so we need to really um, get those things on our radar um, and as well, there's also an associated cost with the NEASC um, accreditation. Uh, the, and it's, it's not cheap. I mean, it's not in the hundreds of thousands, but it could be uh, upwards of, what, 30000 or so, Joanne? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is more. I don't know if it's more expensive um, uh, recently. I, I was just through it uh, probably within the last uh, four years or so. Um, and that would be a viable amount to think that we would be expending on, on that. So, that, again, that's not going to be built into, that's, it's not been built into the current budget, but it will need to be built into the new budget. Um, the SAT um, has changed. Uh, I think that, that this community is pretty uh, um, college focused and SAT and PSAT focused. And uh, we might like to hear what those changes are, uh, just so that you're kept abreast of the kinds of changes uh, that will be happening um, in, in that uh, essentially college entrance uh, exam. The proficiency-based diploma, as you know, we are moving towards an extension. We'll be bringing the extension to the um, board in your first business meeting in October. Um, but we are uh, pushing that out. Um, we're taking option six. That will all be explained to you um, uh, at that meeting. It, actually, you'll get it ahead of the meeting. Uh, but I think that we need to build in some time to give you some updates on where we are in terms of uh, um, meeting the obligations of that extension plan. So those are the things that I either heard or anticipate that you need to know about and would certainly be happy to, um, uh, to, to sort of scribe a list if there's a, a number of them or maybe there's just a, a couple of other things that you'd like to see added to the workshop. Uh, and uh, that was the purpose of, of uh, really taking a few moments tonight to do that. George, is your time frame on the accreditation to not do anything this academic year and to start in next September with the planning process? With the self study. And then the following year would be the accreditation year? It would be, I think it would go that um, this year we will, we will do s some, um, some educating around the process. Um, next year uh, we would uh, build in some time for self study, and the following year, not at the end of that year, but during that year is when the accreditation visit would happen. Yeah. That's what I thought. Thank you. Just so that you uh, see um, what was also, oh, do I have copies of this? Or Kelly, or did everybody get copies? It was in the packet. Yes, okay, you all got copies of this. So uh, this is uh, basically July to, to June, and uh, you can see that there are already some things that are, are built in uh, in terms of uh, certain meetings that you have. For example, the curriculum update is the October 16th uh, board workshop. The, um, you have uh, some time that you will probably uh, be uh, looking at the improvement strategy, our progress update on November 20th, um, budget uh, uh, preview and audit update to the finance committee. So, th so there are some things that are, that are already uh, built in, um, not to say that we can't fit these things, um, or uh, perhaps if you would prioritize uh, uh, um, uh, a couple of other workshop topics uh, that we would be able to fit them in, but I think it's best to try to do that um, uh, earlier rather than, than later. And we'll get them on, plant them on the calendar at times that are appropriate and make sure that we um, have a pretty uh, 
again, pretty, pretty rigorous uh, workshop uh, schedule for you all. Anything that you're just dying to know about? No, I just, uh, are we going to add any items for you? Yes, yeah. yes. Is that okay? Okay. So I have a few. Um, one is that we should take some time to talk a little bit more about communications. Okay. Um, particularly because we've already started that conversation, and I'd like to see all of us have an opportunity, maybe at a workshop or whatever. I'm going to, um, I'm just going to write these and then we'll post the boxes to the yeah. Okay. I got that one, Donna. Um, I'm just wondering about, I, I, I don't know, if it's, but I'm wondering, I'd like to know, have a better feel for how many courses at the high school we already offer that are online and whether or not you know, the principal is hoping to advance the, some more online courses. I'm just thinking that kids are taking band um, and can't take Spanish 4, you know, that kind of a thing. Is, is there a way for us to resolve some of that or maybe just, a little, just something on my mind. Um, the middle school principal um, has some new things going on there this year, or, or she will be developing some new things um, and in terms of project-based education, and I was wondering if she might be able to do a little presentation on that topic. Both at Wentworth and the middle school. They're both, they're both um, forced to do that. Great. So that would be nice to have a little presentation on that. And then, of course, how will we advance technology at the high school? I think, um, I don't know if anybody can hear me, probably, because uh, I, I think that what is happening now at the high school is consistent with picking up on, remember the discussion that we had about graduation requirements? And we said, what's happening is Wentworth School, Middle School are actually adjusting their organization to better deliver, uh, meet kids where they're at. The high school, on the other end, and the K-2 schools are really looking at some organizational changes including, for example, scheduling, which is the fundamental thing that drives what you can do at a high school. Yeah. So I think maybe, Donna, in, included in that could be what is available online now mm -hmm. and or are, are there additional online courses. We do have virtual high school seats mm -hmm. still that kids can use mm -hmm. so they can add something there. And again, um, the, the question is, uh, are those seats being used? And I, I can't really, I can't really speak to it. I, I do know that my history has been that about 50% of the kids that think that they're going to do something online actually never complete it online. So, with regards to that, in the same vein, uh, the numbers of our students, if we have any, who are taking courses at the university. Okay. Yeah. How many are taking advantage of that? For one. Correct. And it's a great opportunity for these kids to be able to get college credit while they're in high school. And, and along with that, is it, if it's not happening, is it again back to the scheduling? That's, that's, that's yeah. exactly right. Exactly. Um, okay. Okay, anything else? And technology, uh, quite honestly, we are convening a group uh, next week um, to look again at bringing forward a proposal for one-to-one -one at the high school. The high school is, um, in, in some ways, way behind the times, way behind all of the other high schools, and we really, we really do need to look at, at um, accelerating that, uh, mm -hmm. addressing that need. It is, it's. It's um, almost 1972 in technology, and I use that right. number because that's when I graduated from high school. Yeah, I um, I sat in a, w a webinar this afternoon on technology and the changes that it makes if your school is using technology the way it can be utilized, and it's just remarkable. With regards to that, George, uh, uh, is the, the committee going to be internal? Or are you going to have people from outside of the school district participate with you on that? Um, I think it's primarily going to come as an internal proposal because I think that we 
know what we need. We know what the capacity is that we need to build. Um, Jen does an extraordinary job in terms of research. I do think that we will, we will rethink again some of the questions that came up when the proposal was first looked at in terms of leasing, in terms of uh, buy, you know, students buying out units, in terms of the possibility of a combination of BYOD um, and, um, and uh, devices that we would, we would provide. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that it would be much more a hybrid, but um, yeah, that's, I, I think that, I, that's how I would imagine seeing it. The reason I ask that is that, that I have a friend who served with me on the school board, is a graduate of Scarborough High School, is young enough to know how to relate, and he works for the Apple store. So uh -huh. if Brian Del Olio was available to meet with this committee, he would be such an asset because he's evolved through the system mm -hmm. and he sat on this board. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, I, I do think that it's, it's probably going to, it will probably start with um, some kind of plan sketched out and I think that there would be opportunity then to bring other people in to really help, help us vet that plan or help the board vet the the plan. So I think there would be a place for that for sure. Okay. Mm. Anybody else have any workshop topics, Jane? Um, well, I think the one of the finance committee meeting we talked about uh, what's the lack in, in all the voids in all the schools, and um, I thought we kind of if you can bring up bring the topics to the board so we can have kind of see how you know this school missing, you know, this and that school missing that, what program they want to have. And so the whole board can have a discussion on the, you know, is that something we really want to pursue and, uh, you know. So um, that will give us some education when it comes to budget time, I think, you know, the, also the public who is watching it also will know what we, you know, we are looking at. And, uh, mm -hmm. What about our opinion, everybody, you know, the, we, we analyze them as a, as a board. Mm -hmm. I I, um, I captured that. Oh, should, um, are there any others that I should add, or I'll, I'll just put this up and you can take a look at how I captured them. I think it's reasonable to believe that we can probably integrate these into the existing workshop schedule, because some of the workshops are dedicated to, for example, to budget. Mm -hmm. And um, let me just put this up now and show you how I captured that. I'm not sure that the camera's got to touch the button. This is probably the easiest way. Yeah. Um, communication update. Uh, we absolutely can do that either in the context of, um, I was going to say in the context of reviewing uh, progress on board goals, but I, we, you probably want to do that even sooner than, than uh, what, what might be like the three or four month check-in on, on mm -hmm. goals. I, yeah, I would say so because um, I, I'd love to see us have a real plan that we come up with. And I think it means engaging all the board on that. Uh, the yep. committee is already working on it, but we need more opportunities to talk to all of you about. And yep. then having a plan as the year progresses. And you will also be having communications com committee meetings as, as well. Is that part of the plan? Will you? Oh, will we, you already, yeah, we already met. We've already plan. started. Okay. And, 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 and certainly the other board members could be invited to, to just sit in on those, those pieces too. Yep. Um, what's happening now online, um, uh, early university courses, and I think, um, as I explained, although we didn't capture it up there, what I would try to do is continue that conversation that we started last year when we were introducing the kind of organizational changes that were happening in the middle of the, of the sequence at Wentworth and at middle school as they've organized now into learning communities and inquiry teams with the capacity to do much more experiential um, project-based learning and a, a better ability to really uh, differentiate and, and, uh, and offer kids both sort of acceleration as needed and remediation as needed. So, and I'd let them talk about that. Mm -hmm. And also at the same time talk about what's, what the high school is looking at, the continuation of the graduation requirements. I just looked at, um, just this morning, um, Yarmouth's uh, graduation requirements in, in terms of getting, getting prepared more for that proficiency-based diploma. Uh, so I think there's some interesting things happening out there that we should really look at. Um, 
and in terms of K2, any organizational changes that they're thinking about in terms of, you know, we do looping, we have um, opportunities for, uh, for uh, uh, kids to sort of be in a looping or non-looping class, really looking at the data and say, what is that telling us? Is, is looping the preferred method? And if yes, then maybe we should be doing more of it. If it's not getting any better results, um, then what, what other things might we be looking at? So I think that's, a, that's maybe a whole organizational piece, but also include the, um, uh, how uh, technology, online courses and university courses will play a role at the high school. Um, and then technology one-to-one, -one. and again, we will, as soon as next week, uh, begin uh, de um, developing that proposal that will be coming forward. And then, uh, Jane, yours is really, I captured it as preview and discussion on high priority needs. You know, if there are s six things that, you know, we really need above all other things, what are those six things? And, um, and, and let's get, a, get, let's get a, an understanding of what they are and why they're so critically important. And I would say to you that one-to-one -one technology at the high school is, is absolutely going to be one of those, if we're talking about top six or top seven. Uh, is that? So, are you finished? I am. I, I just have a question because it just came to me uh, right now. How do we process staff initiatives, staff suggested initiatives? For example, when we started uh, all day kindergarten, it was it was a staff initiative. The kindergarten teachers got together, evidently with their principals, and they came and made a presentation to the Board of Education, made more than one, actually. Second one was that the looping at Wentworth was an initiative that was started by the teachers because they just felt it was a better educational method for some students. Not all. They admitted that. But the teachers and the parents and the students made a presentation to the board uh, in favor of the looping. So I'm just wondering, you know, those are two very important initiatives that came to us from the staff. And I wonder what process we have, and I'm not expecting you to answer it now, but I just hope we can capture uh, that talent mm -hmm. and, and uh, use it to the advantage of teaching our children. So. Mm -hmm. If that's in the works somehow, and we encourage that somehow, someday I'd like yeah. an update on that. Uh, the, the other piece that you'll hear about that relates to that <coughs> is um, that the Leadership Council has, has created their two professional learning teams for this school year. The one that obviously needs to be continued is the, um, is the performance evaluation and professional growth planning, the implementation of the pilot and, the, and then subsequently the, um, the, the whole system. Um, but the second is really looking at best practices in education. So um, I think that that, that, is, that is definitely an, uh, uh, sort of a, a, um, an opportunity to, to really look at some of those things that are happening. And we, and we do have, have uh, teachers on a regular basis but on a smaller basis, looking at new initiatives. In fact, the, the thing that you're seeing now are uh, some of those small initiatives being funded uh, by the Scarborough Education Foundation. So, so there's, I think there's even more opportunities for, for us to, to, to look at and think about some of these new initiatives. But unfortunately, I, I think that if, they're, if they cost a lot of money, um, we've got some, some critical um, sort of fundamental initiatives like one-to-one -one at the high school that, that really, you know, basically absorbs a big, a, a big amount of money and, um, and leaves relatively little left to, for, for other things. I do think that the changes that have happened at Wentworth and the changes that have happened at the middle school organizationally has basically come from, um, from staff and and really looking at the initiatives of getting more project-based, more connected with Common Core, which really means that it's just more related to what kids need to know in order to be successful, not just to, to, to get 
through seventh grade, but to be successful ultimately in continued education beyond what we offer here, and obviously in, in their career. So, so I think it's, but I think it's a good question, and and also, a, you know, a good discussion to have. So. Well, I think it's, I think it's important for the board to know first that that is happening, Th that it that we have staff who are bringing things forward, that it's being encouraged, but more importantly, it's important that the public understand that we're all in this together. You know, we say we're all in this together with the parents and the, and the teachers and the, the Board of Education, but we need to communicate that information so that people know that, that we do have an excellent staff. And we try to, you know, we do try to showcase some of those things, even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes. For example, like the the robotics club, right. like the you know the, st the STEM initiative that was really teacher driven, mm -hmm. grant funded, and, um, and and basically meeting a, a big need. And I, that's that's one that just comes to mind. Mm -hmm. That's how Mrs. Sizemore learned computer, <laughs> right? The computer club at the middle school. Oh. Um, I really agree with uh, Jackie on that point. I think, you know, we have to maintain a team in terms of, you know, the staff and teachers. And, you know, you're talking about best practices and, uh, you know, if that, every, you know, we can encourage the teachers and voice, the, you know, shares and those information, that I think that would be very beneficial. You know, not, not everything is going to cost money. And, but, you know, having the teachers have a voice in terms of what they're doing, I think it would be very um, beneficial. And of course, the entire community can have a voice um, this April, April, May timeline. We haven't identified the, the day, but we're due for another community dialogue because that would, that would be the time that we would refresh what has now become sort of the 24-month plan that carries us through this year. And, uh, you know, I, I do think some, I mean, for example, I think back, Joanne, uh, in the first community dialogue, mm -hmm. all the discussion about um, teacher evaluation. And that was a big and very hot topic. The, all of the discussion about um, uh, rebuilding foreign language, that was a big and hot topic. STEM was a big and hot topic. Mm -hmm. and, and so, uh, so I think that those, I think that that's a bigger and broader catalyst for bringing things forward and really, and really having us pay attention to things that the community thinks are important. They are not insulated to just the Scarborough schools. They know that over in Cape or down over in Gorham or over here or down in Massachusetts where their <coughs> nephew goes to school, what's going on? And uh, so I, and they have a lot of good ideas, I think. So. One of the big topics at the last, well, the two community dialogues that have happened, right? Do you want me two since today? Mm -hmm. There's um, actually been, yeah, two, two. And the third one will be happening in that April May time frame. Well, I just I just remember all the students from the first one and then again the second one talking about all the ways that Wentworth was an uncomfortable place to learn. <laughs> yeah. Like That's they right. lined Safety. up on the stage. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. talking about all the ways that that building was uncomfortable. And by then, by the second one, it was already underway. But that was a big deal right. for the community and right. yeah, apparently nice. because they voted for the school. So it's good. Mm -hmm. nice. Well, the found a foundation, getting a foundation going, mm -hmm. getting a, um, a, uh, a business and school partnership going. Mm -hmm. um, re who mm -hmm. talked about um, revitalizing the art show, right, the, or an art festival, and now we have, a, we have an arts council. So, I mean, those, mm -hmm. those are things that, that there are direct connects to a lot of those things that, that um, go right back to the dialogues. So. I was just going to say, um, <coughs> I don't know if it could be a work workshop topic, but maybe there's a way to make sure that the Education Foundation comes here on a regular basis once they've either awarded grants so people can hear what ideas the teachers are coming up with and you can sort of infer from that mm -hmm. the way that people are thinking and the ideas that may be bubbling up um, from the teachers themselves. And we can do that um, after the grant. After the grant uh, cycle happens. Yep. Okay. And I, I think we've I think we've talked to that. Yeah, yes, we have. Okay, if um if these are good, I'm certainly if you have other things you can you can uh, try to fit them in. But if these are good, I can go back home. Oh, yes, um I I have something I, I, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but um I feel like 
you know, the, we get the updated on student performance in the curriculum, you know, twice a year, every six months. And um, I would like to see more about talking about our how we to students doing in these schools and uh, um, where are the things that, you know, just not really into how, you know, the run, uh, um, the leadership run, you know, manage the school, but give, give us some information, you know, really individual schools, what's the strengths, what's the weaknesses, what, do, you know, we're doing to, to, so we kind of bring up more focus on, you know, on the performance, right? I would really love to see that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have we have time scheduled, and if you have, if, if you can give me some sense of additional things beyond the data, because what we do is the data analysis. We look at the mm -hmm. strengths, we look at the opportunities. Um, we can also profile sort of the changes that are happening in each of the in each of the schools' curricula wise. If you if that if that means what you're saying. Yes, but in mm -hmm. more detail instead of next week. So I I feel like workshop uh, environment we can all ask questions and. Uh, you know, discuss it um, mm. on DD in, in depth. So. I just want to say, when we have presentations, with regards to data, we get a printout. We don't need a presentation on the printout. I would much more prefer to have an overview of where we started and where we are now and what we need to do to get someplace else. Because we can spend all, we do, we have spent over the years, tremendous amounts of time listening to a report on the data. Hmm. And <coughs> I think if you've got it in front of you, we can all read. So let's talk about what it means, where are we going with it. Well, and one big change is going to be that our students will take that smarter balance testing this year, which goes along with the Common Core. And those kids all have to take it on computer. I know. Now, if you got 1,300 kids in the high school and one or two labs with computers, you're going to have to play around with that schedule to get 24, 30 kids in that room at a time to do language arts, math, writing. Mm -hmm. And that is not an easy task. <laughs> it interrupts the school day incredibly for day. everybody. A day. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just it interrupts it for for all the kids, all the staff. It's just it's lost teaching time. You take the high school students down to the Wentworth, Wentworth and you take the Wentworth <laughs> children up to the high school for the day. <laughs> well, it's a bigger, it's a new, it's a new thing, you know. So that data is going to be very new for us to see. Um, you know, it that's is. particularly it's going to be significant in terms of you know, how many kids are going to be able to pass those tests because this is very different than taking the kinds of tests we've taken in the past. That's, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Yes, very good point. I just want to, you know, because we don't have one to one so far this year, what are we going to do? And maybe we have share the computer or, you know, the middle school and the laptop shift to the high school for a couple of days just to, uh -huh. I mean, to accommodate what we have right now. So, and that also give us, uh, shows us the reality what's really, you know, needs to be done to, to, to get it, do it better. That, that is a hot topic. Hot topic yeah. mm -hmm. and, I mean, it has remained a hot topic and it will, it, it will be, it will be the, it will be, you'll be hearing about that very early on. Okay, if anyone doesn't have any um, any additional workshop topics, then we can move on to 4.3. Um, we need to choose a delegate for the Maine School Board Association Convention. So I'll jump at once, everyone, but I've done it before. If nobody else wants to do it, I can do it again. But I did it last year. It comes up on that first day. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's instead of one of the workshops. It's nothing extra. You just go instead of. Yeah. Somebody, <coughs> if you're new, you might find it interesting. There's so uh, for, I don't know if you've looked at the brochure, but there's two days of workshops that are different presenters, um, and the um, it's just you're missing just one one of your you know because you, you choose it's you know you choose what you want to do, and we try to spread out and cover a, a lot of areas, but. Um, so it's just instead of one of those workshops. So you don't have to stay longer. You don't have to do anything else. You get a nice ribbon from your name tag. It says delegate. You basically go in Very a prestigious. closed room. You <laughs> yeah. go in a closed room, and there's people from all over the state there representing their board. And then you vote. Do you agree with topics, this? Do you yeah. agree with that? Raise and they're policy, policy questions generally, you yeah. know. I would have loved to go, but... Those two days, uh, can't go. yeah, can come because my husband goes out of town. I already have two days. So, do you stay overnight? No, we oh. drive back and forth. Jackie stays because she's a big Jackie's wig up there. A big, she's, she's a big deal. She goes big, for three days. Yeah. Big important person <coughs> up there. In the so, we yeah, drive yeah. back and forth. Yes. I'm, I'm fine to take that on. <laughs> you want to do it and I'll be the alternate? Mm -hmm. Sure. There we go. And I'll be there anyway. Okay. You just want the ribbon. It's a, it's a keepsake, really. <laughs> <laughs> and just so that you know that we, um, Scarborough, will actually be doing one of the sessions. Um, we've, we've been asked to do um, the session on uh, school board, um, high school uh, school board representatives. And mm -hmm. so I'll be tapping um, uh, Ms. Perry's uh, historical knowledge of when that all started. Um, but we're also inviting the two um, the two reps that we have. We have a brand new rep, um, and she can talk about why she did this, and she's going to talk about the uh, the process for how she was elected. Um, and we will uh, we will ask um, our more experienced rep to to talk about the impact that she feels that she's had. Maybe even brainstorm some suggestions as to how the two of them together hope to make it a stronger connection to the board mm -hmm. in the high school. Um, and uh, Christine will probably, uh, as the chair, will probably talk about the contributions that she feels that they, they have made. And um, I have a little bit of experience of having uh, reps on the board in the three districts that I've been in. So we'll put a nice little presentation <laughs> together. It's primarily for people who are just considering it and who haven't done it yet. Um, but um, Bob Hassan asked us if we would do it, and I said oh, yes. Cool. Good. If you, ha if you have an em empty uh, dance ticket for that <laughs> session, you can come and watch <laughs> us or contribute if you would like. I don't know. We need to spread out <laughs> and cover as many of those workshops that's as we it. can. Okay. That's it. Do we have a motion for adjournment? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank Good you.